my very sincere greetings to all of you and it is once again my great uh, pleasure and privilege to be able to spend some time of time with all of you for this uh, facebook live session we have gone through a lot of questions that all of you have sent and we have tried to consolidate those questions and one by one we will try and answer these questions in our facebook live sessions the question that we want to take up today is how to handle stress hundreds and hundreds of uh, people who follow us live have asked this question how to handle how to manage stress in our life so this is the particular point for discussion for our facebook live session this evening now uh, gorangi dasi hari krishna uh, karan hari krishna dayane hello and sogata jay shri krishna satyanarayan good evening rahul hari krishna uh, itu gupta ji good evening mansi very very happy to have you here with us rohit good evening to you jewel hari krishna Leowin uh, all the way from Philippines thank you for joining us all the way from Philippines Swaminathan Pranam Shashwat thank you very much for joining us again Sumit uh, uh, Hari Krishna to you as well uh, I'm really really glad to be able to spend this time with all of you this evening uh, so during uh, when as I was going through all of these questions about stress one gentleman had asked is it possible to live a life with no stress at all and my answer is a no no there is no question of living a life which is free from stress we are all going to have to go through stress in some way shape or form in some area of life or the other whether it's work whether it's relationships whether it's due to some financial problems whether it's due to some personal issues whether it's due to political situations there is certainly going to be stress in our lives we cannot avoid stress just like if someone falls into a pool of water he or she cannot avoid getting wet you can avoid getting affected by the wetness you can avoid getting a cold by boosting your immunity but you cannot avoid getting wet if you are in a pool of water similarly when we live in this world particularly in this modern era in this modern day and age it's hard to not get wet it's hard to not get affected by the situations that are around us in fact i always feel the very fact that there are ups and downs in our lives that cause this stress to us it means we are living problems is a symptom of life when there are ups and downs that means we are still living like i always say if you look at an ecg the ecg is flat only for a dead man or a woman only when you are dead the ecg is completely flat but when you are living the ecg is going up and down up and down so the only place where the line will be flat is in the graveyard the only place where the line of stress will be flat will be in the crematorium if you are living there is going to be ups and there is going to be downs there is going to be the low phases there is going to be the difficulties the problems the challenges that are going to cause pressure that are going to cause stress and we cannot avoid it ladies and gentlemen which is why the more we come to terms with the fact that it's going to be there the more we come to terms with the fact that it's going to be an integral part of our life and the more we accept this reality that's how much we can actually deal with it rightly so firstly there's no question of a life with no stress just like there's no question of falling in a pool of water and not getting wet now i do not think pressure is always bad we need the right amount of pressure we need the adequate amount of pressure for our growth you know a diamond was once upon a time a charcoal but under the right amount of pressure under the right amount of uh, stress that charcoal turned into a glittering diamond so i strongly feel that we need that right amount of pressure we need that right amount of stress in order that we grow when that pressure crosses the threshold of our tolerance that's when it affects us negatively when it's beyond our to- so long as the pressure is handleable and it helps us grow it's great but as soon as that pressure crosses the boundary it crosses our tolerance threshold it starts affecting us badly 
negatively it starts affecting our mental stability it starts affecting our mental peace it starts affecting our performance it starts affecting our dealings with others we start becoming irritable we start tro- throwing ten- temper tantrums we start moving out of alignment from a life of balance and that's what we call stress the positive side of it is the pressure for growth but the negative side of it which is beyond our ability to tolerate and handle is the element that we call stress now this is the element that we need to deal with handle in a way that it doesn't harm us in a way that it doesn't hamper our productivity our performance our relationships our personal life this evening i thought i would share with you a couple of my thoughts on how to handle and deal this negative element of stress something that's getting beyond our threshold of tolerance something that's hitting us so hard and getting on to our nerves so much that we're not able to lead a satisfied fulfilled contented stable balanced life so i want to divide this entire discussion into three areas number 1 i want to talk about work i'm sure loads of you out there are certainly resonating with me when i talk about work stress coming from work now believe me you hand on my heart i truly do not think that work is the cause of stress loads of times people keep talking to me about this that's work which is stressing us i do not think that work causes stress i think it's the wrong kind of work that causes stress work that you don't enjoy work that's not what you want to do work that doesn't drive you work that you're not in love with when you do something that you don't like when you do something that you don't want when you do something that's not your calling when you do something that you don't enjoy what do you expect stress what do you expect a negative emotion a negative pressure on your head because you don't look forward to it a lots of times i say now the people who look for a weekend are the ones who are stressed i'm sorry i'm not uh, i'm not saying that those who are looking for a weekend everybody is like that but if you want a break from our work that means we don't enjoy doing it that means just pressurizing us so much that we need a break from it if you love something you wake you get up at 12 o'clock somebody wakes you up at 12 o'clock in the night 1 o'clock in the morning you still will jump out of your bed to do it ladies and gentlemen which is why i think it's the wrong kind of work that causes us stress imagine if you do the right kind of work something that you love something that drives you something that you feel inspired to do something that you're motivated by something that consumes you so much that you practically forget everything around you that kind of work is the right pressure it's not that negative pressure that kind of positive work that you enjoy and you love doing is the right kind of pressure that helps your personal growth at work how can there be work without pressure how can there be work with no pressure on your head there is going to be pressure at work the question that you need to ask yourself is is it that positive pressure that comes from the work you enjoy doing the work that you feel feel you are cut for or is it the negative pressure that comes from the wrong kind of work that you hate doing that you take complete completely disgusted with now i know and many of you are saying there out there that that's right that's true but the fact of life is most all of you there are stuck with some kind of work that you don't like doing is that wrong kind for you but it pays your bills it takes care of all the bills it takes care of all the taxes it takes care of all the fees for your kids and children it takes care of all the household uh, uh, requirements and needs that you have in your life so what do we do in such a situation don't you all there sometimes just feel so stuck in life and i'm stuck with this work i don't want to do it i hate it i hate it to the core but it pays off the bills so i'm feeling stressed because i don't enjoy it but it also make i it it, it just gives me a paycheck which takes care of all our needs what do we do in such a kind of a situation the first thing you need to do is this Uh, for those of you who are married or are in a relationship you will know this when you're in a relationship with someone or you're married you don't like everything about that individual whom you're in a relationship with there's certain things in that person whom you 
वो थिंग्स दैट यू जस्ट कैनॉट हैंडल जस्ट कैनॉट टेक जस्ट कैनॉट टॉलरेट देर आर अदर थिंग्स इन दैट इंडिविजुअल विच यू आर ओके विद न्यूट्रल चलेगा इट्स ऑल राइट बट देर आर अदर थिंग्स विच यू ट्रूली एंजॉय विच यू ट्रूली कनेक्ट टू नो इंडिविजुअल इज परफेक्ट no person whom you're going to have a relationship with is perfect and so also no job no kind of work is perfect there are going to be things in your work in your job that you just don't like which could also be a majority of it there's going to be certain things in your life in your work which you may be okay with but there may be some elements of your work even one element in your work that you may probably like a little bit when you're stuck because of the doing the wrong kind of work but because it pays you and you can't move out you're helpless you're not going to be able to quit then treat your work like a marriage treat your work like a relationship you will have to focus on and pay your attention to that one element if you can even identify that one part of your work that one element of your work which you probably can develop a liking for it's going to make that pressure on your head which is negative a little lesser if possible quit it and do what you like but for most of us it's not a reality ground reality is that we are not going to be able to quit that particular job that you don't like doing for the simple reason that there are real needs in the real world so start liking a part of it like in a relationship when you focus on that positive side and you start liking that particular side of the individual your relationship is based on that higher purpose if you just focus on the negative side which could be a major side or the things that are you neutral to it's not going to work so my first advice to manage and deal with your stress at work in a job that you don't like is this start liking an element of your work if you don't know what it is start identifying that one element which truly you can connect to and develop look forward to it every day that one element if not the entire part and it's going to minimize at least a part of the negative stress that comes from your work but that's not all the second aspect according to me is also start adding to your life something that you truly love to do in your work for example you may be a software engineer you may hate coding but you may love you may love you know art you may love music you may love theater whatever else it may be that you love start adding a little bit of that even if it's not too frequent even if it's once in a fortnight even if it's once in a week or once in 3 weeks whatever the frequency may be you please start adding that element to your life that kind of work that kind of passion that kind of calling something that you truly love doing i assure you your stress levels will slowly go down a by starting to like some element of what you have to do at your work and b by starting to add some element that you love to do in your work together you can deal with that stress together you can manage with the stress that you go through at your work in a job that you don't like more effectively so conclusively on this work front start liking something about the wrong kind of work where you're stuck something that you don't love and start adding a part of something that you truly enjoy doing the right kind of work to your life that balance can help you that balance can help you find the ability and the strength to navigate your journey through your work life uh, the book that we have written uh, life's amazing secrets is going to be out on the 17th of september in all lead stores across the country we are also trying to penguins publishing it we're trying to see if penguin usa and penguin uk and penguin australia can publish it also if they're able to publish it people all of you overseas will also get the copies otherwise you'll probably need to get it from the indian stores or the indian uh, online portals but in that book we have elaborately discussed this subject matter of work something that we have to do something that we love to do and how do we balance it has been discussed elaborately in that book as well now the second area of stress leaving work aside 
is our relationships. Now, one lady once went to a doctor. The lady, the doctor asked the lady, "So, madam, how's your headache?" The lady said, "Well, he is out of town." Now, believe me, more than the literal physical headache is the headache that people cause us. You know, uh, people are sometimes just who they are. Our relationships are. extremely satisfying and they are very very meaningful to us at the same time people have their individual natures people have their baggage that they carry with people are, have a certain upbringing that they've brought with them which is why dealing with people's not as easy you know so how do we handle the stress the negative pressure that comes not because the nature of the right kind or the wrong kind of work but because the people around us now it could be personal relationships or it could be relationships at work with our colleagues with our bosses with our managers with our teammates you know but people whether in a personal relationship marriage loving relationship with someone friendship or just a official relationship at work people i feel causes more pressure than the work itself so how do we handle this now believe me again i think pressure the right amount and the adequate amount of pressure is needed even in our relationships in order that we grow growth is a consequence of pressure there's no question of growth without proper pressure whether it's a diamond which was a charcoal under a pressure or whether it's biceps or triceps which is a muscle under the pressure of weights there's no question of growth without pressure so even in our relationships there is going to be a need for that right amount for that adequate amount of pressure let's say for example personal relationships married relationships relationships with your children relationships with your parents relationships with your friends there is going to be a need for some pressure in fact whether you need it or not it's going to be there anyways now when that pressure is healthy when that pressure is within the threshold of tolerance that pressure grows gives us tremendous depth in our relationships in fact anybody can hang out with each other when times are good when times are challenging when times are trying when times are testing times that's when you can actually prove to each other how much you mean to each other in a personal relationship love is tested and only in testing times is true love proven and even at work when there's a trying situation when there's that pressure difference of opinion some kind of an uncomfortable misunderstanding going on with a colleague or a boss or a teammate i feel very strongly even that pressure when it's in the right within the right boundary is very important and good because it it allows us to focus on the higher principle of cooperation synergy syncing with each other trying to adjust compromise in a way that a team works well so that pressure is good even in relationships with people but the problem is when that pressure whether in a personal or a work relationship crosses crosses the threshold of tolerance that boundary that is when it's called stress that is when it gets on to our nerves that is when it brings in so much distress and so much mental anguish we kind of some people go into depression because of it so how do we handle that how do we handle people who are sometimes so pushy people who are so dominating that you kind of like god just give me a break from this guy you know whether it's a personal relationship or it is a work relationship how do we handle it so here are my four principles i'd like to suggest to you these four principles believe me these four principles work well in handling pressures negative pressures that come from people the first principle change the frequency that your mind vibrates at i'll explain what i mean we are all vibrating at a certain frequency our mood our attitude our value systems our belief systems the way we are we are all vibrating a certain energy at a certain frequency and the frequency of energy that we are vibrating at we attract the same kind of energy from the other people as well to give you a simple analogy to give you a simple example it's like you have a radio receiver and you're wanting to listen to some kind of a radio program 
tuning into FM channels and you tune in your radio receiver to let's say 92.3 megahertz or whatever it is FM right when you tune your radio receiver to 92.5 megahertz or 90 look at example 92.3 megahertz uh, FM channel then you attract that 92.3 megahertz of a frequency to come towards your radio receiver and that's when you listen to the program on your radio receiver so you attract 92.3 dig no, it's not dig I'm sorry 92.3 megahertz frequency which is there around only when you tune your radio receiver to 92.3 so when the radio receiver is vibrating at that frequency that's the frequency that's attracted so we are all like that radio receiver the kind of frequency at which we vibrate our energy internally vibrates we are going to attract that kind of energy from people so the first thing that I want to share in dealings with people number one is change the energy change the frequency that you are vibrating at what does it mean in literal terms what does it mean in practical terms when you're dealing with people here's here's how what it means in very simple terms you bring out the bad or the good side of the other person based on how you deal with them if you deal with them rightly with the right energy the right frequency you will attract that right energy right frequency from them so that's number one try and attract the right kind of energy now that sounds good but a lot of times despite your giving the right kind of energy the right kind of vibe the right kind of frequency the right kind of words the right kind of dealings the right kind of uh, uh, actions towards them still people are who they are you cannot change people's natures completely right you can change a little bit by your dealings and bring out the good side but there's still going to be people who are very rigid people who are very hardwired people who are very stubborn and very deeply rooted into their habits because of their upbringing in terms of how they deal with others so what do you do then the second one the second point is after changing your frequency the second is communication there is no substitute to clear good communication if you are going if you're being hurt by someone in your personal relationship if you're being hurt by someone in a workplace relationship i do not think there is a substitute to good communication if you have a relationship there's a great need that you communicate personally but if you cannot you will need someone who is an intermediate person whether it's a boss at work whether it's a friend in your personal relationship whoever it is to mediate and communicate to talk to those people and tell them what about them is hurting you a how is it hurting you b c why is it hurting you and d what could be done that this hurt that you feel can be stopped what could be done to patch up in a way that this relationship moves on in the right direction and it doesn't seem to be too much on your mind in terms of stress and negative pressure so yes the second aspect is communication what's hurting you how is it hurting you why is it hurting you and what can be done in a way that we can sort this out so change your frequency learn to communicate rightly the third one even despite communication even despite speaking everything that you can clearly either directly or with someone as a mediator between the two both in personal and workplace relationships or any relationship for that matter believe me believe me still people can just remain who they are i am sure you know this well i've lived here in the monastery in this ashram for 22 years i've been an easy ride in terms of people sometimes people don't even have a bad intention they don't have a bad intention they don't mean wrong but they're just who they are that's their upbringing that's their nature that's their personality type and it hurts you because your personality type is a different one you've done communication you changed your frequency still that person's personality type doesn't change and it's still hurting you what do you do then and in a situation 
where you can't even move out you're helplessly stuck in a personal relationship or in a workplace you can't move out it's just necessary it has to like i said work it just pays the bills what do you do in such a situation the third thing i talk about is consume yourself with something much higher in a way that this drama around you affects you less the drama around you affects you more because you get consumed by the drama but if you get consumed by something that's much higher than the drama give yourself to your work give yourself to your passion if you're at the workplace and this guy is playing a drama or that lady is playing a drama around i'm saying communicate i'm saying do what's needful still that guy does cont- or that lady continues to do that you consume yourself with excellence you consume yourself with a passion a drive to get the best version of yourself if you do not that's going to keep hurting you I know for sure as I lived here and there were people with the best intentions good guys nothing bad about them but just the wrong type in terms of connecting to me completely different personality type hurts you they just do things in a certain way aggressive way and you can't handle it right I learned one thing in all my 22 years it has helped me grow so deep because I learned how to tolerate it not based on tolerating <gasps> you know tolerate like that learned how to tolerate it by consuming myself with my passion by consuming myself with what I love to do I'm here with all of you on Facebook today doing a live session because I decided to consume my mind by what drives me and when i get consumed by what drives me when i give myself to what drives me i'm still surrounded by those hard people not because they are bad but they just hard so what do you do well because you're so consumed that drama either doesn't affect you or it affects you less bringing your mental stress levels because of their individual much lower than otherwise and the last the fourth thing that i usually like to tell people in dealing with stress and negative pressure that comes by people around us who just don't change because of their personality type their upbringing their background whatever it is the fourth thing that i usually like to tell people is this last option when it's an extreme case scenario first change the frequency at which you vibrate second learn to communicate rightly third get consumed by a purpose get consumed by what you love to do in a situation where you just can't move on and the fourth is an extreme case scenario where it's so abusive in a personal or a workplace relation it's so absolutely abusive that you come to the threshold of a breakdown take a break from that person the last thing to do is take a break from that person you know how do you take a break in a personal or a workplace relationship the first thing is you you cut off that's the fourth point cut yourself off how do you cut yourself off you cut yourself off by moving away for a while if it's a personal relationship take a break cut off move away for a while and get your energy get your inspiration stabilize yourself so you can jump back in consume yourself again and handle it in the future but if you can't cut off just for that while well in some cases you have to cut off for good don't ruin your mental peace don't ruin your life work or personal don't ruin it because you are valuable your peace is valuable god created you not to be miserable god misery is all around us like i said stress factors of stress are there but how do you handle it for yourself defines the way you live therefore when i talk about relationships and people these are the four c's number the first c change the frequency at which you vibrate second c communicate third c consume yourself with your calling and pressure i mean calling and passion and the fourth c cut yourself off for a while and jump back and if it's just too much you may have to just move out completely without ruining your life totally the last and the third area that i really want to talk about in terms of handling stress is our personal life so there's work that we spoke about earlier second is people and relationships that we spoke about 
and the third is just personal life. And when we're talking about personal life, it's not work that's going wrong. It's okay, work going good. It's not people who are doing much. People are okay. It's just me. Some people just are who they are. They just everything to their mind, everything to their heart, and just get stuck inside. Things are going out great. Things outside are going great. But just internally, my God, some people take everything to heart. They're just so super sentimental sometimes, so super sensitive. And nothing's wrong literally outside, but they just take it too much. Somebody said something, he didn't even mean it. And it didn't even appear that he meant offen offense. We just take it and think, oh, he did that, she said that, he said this, he did that. That's, called, that's what I call personal life. You know, How do you handle that stress? It causes you so much negative pressure. When you're too sensitive and keep taking these things internally, I think this is what we need to do. You know, I always say the same water that's responsible for a boat or a ship to sail through towards the shore or towards the bank, that same water is also responsible, the ship or the boat, to sink into the waters if there's a hole in it. If there's no hole in the boat, the boat sails across smoothly. But if there is a hole in the boat, water comes gushing in and makes the boat or the ship sink inside. So similarly, we are all going to be surrounded by so much pressure, like the water. So many things going on, so many issues going on. If we allow those things to regularly enter our minds, what do you think you're going to go through? You are going to go through stress. You are going to go through an emotional turmoil internally. I'll tell you something. We need to learn how to seal the whole of the heart. Which is why my advice is we need a good counsellor. I mean a counsellor not as in a psychological counsellor necessarily, a good mentor, a good guide who can help us understand, who can help us strengthen our emotions internally, who can help us deal with what we go through internally. Because work's okay, people around are not bad, but it's our mind that's taking in it, taking it in too much. And the second thing that I advise people in dealing with this personal uh, lack of stability inside, despite everything else going out well outside, is uh, a spiritual practice, a sadhana. Last 22 years, I've been chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, the names of God, every single day. And believe me, that connection to God, that connection to divinity, that connection to a higher power, is very, very powerful to give us that internal strength to give us that internal resilience, to give us that internal ability and capacity to handle those things that are around us, which not necessarily are causing stress from outside, but we are taking it inside and just stressing ourselves for no reason. Which is why when I talk about stress, I talk about the positive side of stress, which is responsible for our growth and we should have it, like a stress or pressure on charcoal, which turns it into a diamond. But I also talk about the negative kind of stress, which is when that pressure crosses our tolerance threshold and starts hurting us. And I, like we discussed, we discussed the three areas. Number one is work. And in work, the primary key line to remember is this. Start, start liking a part, even a part of the wrong kind of work that you don't like, but are stuck with to pay the bills. But also start adding at least a part of the right kind of work that you love doing. That balance will handle you deal with your stress properly. The second kind of thing we spoke about was people and relationships. And remember the four C's, change the frequency that you vibrate at. Secondly, communicate and learn the right kind of communication. Thirdly, consume yourself by your drive, your passion, your calling, so that the drama doesn't affect you as much. And fourthly, cut yourself off from people momentarily, so that you feel better and jump back in or if it's just too much and too abusive permanently if the need may be in an extreme case situation and the third aspect we spoke about in terms of stress is a personal life where everything else outside seems okay but we are just we just take it in too much and when we need to deal with that kind of stress i think we need good mentors to guide us so that we can uh, navigate our thoughts inside in the right direction and 
secondly we need to practice a sp sadhana have a spiritual practice which is our connection to god uh, in a way that we get that inner strength become strong from inside to face those things within i thank you all very very much for your kind attention himanshi preeti shobha parag i'm so glad that you joined us this evening so much thank you very much shreya i i i really really i'm so happy that you joined us astro thank you so much for being with us neel shakur i'm very glad that you joined us arpita thank you very much uh, rishab thank you very much and i i want to take each of your names we have 4 and a half thousand people online and i don't know if i can take everyone's name princey thank you very much for that question maybe we will answer that at a later point of tamalka and suman thank you very very much in the next couple of sessions whenever we meet next for our facebook live i will consolidate all of the questions that you've asked and take one topic and many questions related to that like today we had consolidated all the stress related questions and took the topic of stress one day we'll take forgiveness one day we'll take luck and destiny and karma and all of this things and this way we can ans answer the questions otherwise the number of questions are so many and of similar type it can get a little hard to answer them uh, one by one so we will consolidate them and take them as topics to address during our facebook live session uh, jaksia thank you for joining us again deepak thank you very much suruchi thank you very much all the way for joining us all the way from Austra australia uh, angel sanchez very very glad that you with us avijit ashu thank you very much i wish you all a great weekend ahead and looking forward to being with you for a facebook live session very soon again thank you very much hari krishna